Greetings beautiful people, welcome to this week's vlog. The theme behind this week's vlog is all about sexual harassment that happens in the TV and film industry within South Africa. Now although this is a global issue and a global problem, I want to focus on South Africa because that's where I'm based. And um, for those of you who, who don't know who I am, I've been in the, the TV, film and theatre industry for over 25 years. I've worked as an actress, TV presenter, behind the scenes, producer, director, and I also manage talent across Africa. So I'm speaking from many, very many different levels and many different hats. And so I thought we needed to address this issue. Number one, it's we're celebrating Human Rights Day on Wednesday. Um, the 21st of, of March, and as sexual harassment is a violation of our human rights, I thought it was apt to, to, to speak about this, about this on my vlog. But also, um, I'm speaking from a place of personal experience, and I'm also going to be comparing another experience um, of somebody who used social media platform to talk about, to talk about an incident that happened on set and, and how she resolved it. So, first and foremost, um, I, as I said, I've been an actress um, and, and been in the industry for many years and I took a break from acting to hone in on my other skills and also went on a personal journey. And when I decided to come back, this wonderful opportunity came to be on one of the South African shows uh, and I was very, very excited to be working with a group of phenomenally talented and dynamic actors and actresses and production for what I, what I thought um, and the brief for me was was powerful woman, she's sexy, she uses a sex appeal. Uh, I did question about that before I went for the audition and how much would I need to take off my clothing and so forth. I was told no, um, everything is, is above board as, a, as, 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 as the casting director did say. And like every manager and, and actor, I rate my contract thoroughly. And artists out there, read your contracts. If there's a clause, if there's a line, if there's a statement that you don't understand, do not sign it until you do understand it. And of course, I read my clauses and there was a clause that was put in by the production team that no nudity, no semi-naked, um, I wouldn't be expected to perform any sexual scenes whatsoever. So I thought I was covered. Uh, first script read came, saw that there were like heavy sexual scenes. I was told by the director it will be rewritten, uh, and those scenes were a little bit too risque. I was I felt perfectly comfortable. I did alert my agent about it. She says, "Well, if if there are those type of things that happen, what 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 is supposed to happen in the industry is that you're supposed to sit down with the production team and explain exactly how much you're willing to do, how much skin you're willing to show, what what you're willing to do, and out of respect for the actors involved, not just the actresses, but for the actors involved, it's supposed to be a closed set. Now, closed set is that minimal crew in, the director is in. It's supposed to be a wardrobe person on standby, so if you are taking your clothes, they then cover you up, you're under the covers, or whatever it is, but it is supposed to be planned out accordingly. This didn't happen. Scenes came, realized that my, my, the script hadn't changed from the beginning. The director on, on the scene was, was incredibly accommodating, and she said, what are you willing to do, and we worked around it. Uh, wardrobe came, and it was way too risque for me. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong if you want to be showing off your breasts or your nipples, whatever that is your prerogative, but it's not something that I was comfortable in doing. Um, and so I refused, and I had every right to refuse to wear that outfit purely because it was showing off certain strategic parts of my body. I worked forward, explained to my agent, spoke to production, it was supposed to be sorted out. After a couple of scenes, a couple of days later, same wardrobe came came to set. This, it, it, this, this whole situation became a little bit too monotonous. I had a meeting with production, um, apologised. Uh, one of the things that were mentioned in production was, well, you didn't notify us of this decision before uh, you started working. And I aptly corrected the producer saying, well, it was in the contract that you had given me. And, well, it's my right. If I don't want to take my clothing, I don't have to tell you that. You need to ask me that. 
And so um, moving forward, everything was supposed to be all above board. And once again, another script came and it was a sexual scene. Contacted my manager at the time and her lack of empathy and, and, and comments were not only a big light bulb moment for me, but also incredibly infuriating. And why I say this, because I'm speaking from a man, my manager's, manager's cap, and a lot of managers and agents need to realize is that our artists work for us. I mean, we, 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 we sorry, my bad, we work for our artists. And it is our job to ensure that their safety is adhered to and set, and that they are comfortable, and that they... They, 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 they are respected and their rights are adhered to when on set. So when she came back and said, well, the producer said to me, said that um, my character's a bit crazy, I should get used to this type of behavior. I was like, actually, no, I don't have to get used to it because I didn't agree to it. And then her retaliation after that was, well, you don't want to be make too much noise because then they won't want to work with you again. Boom. Hello. If somebody's going to disrespect me, I don't want to work with them again. And ironically, since then, I didn't get any acting jobs after that, which is fine because I do have my brand and I have work agency and so forth pushing me forward. But if I was a young girl entering into that industry, that comment would have pushed me into a corner or would have made me leave the industry. And, and that is unfair. So... I wanted to share that story with you and, and granted the, the channel involved, soon found out later on about what was happening because I ultimately resigned and we had a mediation and I salute the channel for doing that and I told them and it was the first time I got an apology from them, a, a, a concrete and, and, and sincere apology and it would have been okay until I found out or rather the ramifications that happened afterwards realising that the production team did not take responsibility for their actions. And like in so many abuse cases and so many cases where women speak out, blame is then put onto the woman. And in cases when it's a man, it's the blame is then put onto the man. But we're talking about, in reality, majority of these incidences it happens to women. So before everyone comes on to me, yes, well, it also happens to men. Yes, I understand that. But this is not that platform for that. And, uh, you know, after that, I did my own, you know, did my own projects and so forth. And unfortunately, the show didn't get another season on the network. And I was told by three different forces who were in a specific meeting called by production when they were telling the actors that, listen, the show is not going to be going on and you'd have to find other forms of employment. And the words from the production manager was, you can thank Rosie McDenna for losing your jobs. And I wasn't surprised and I'm not hurt by that because being in the activism space, that is the reality. I know this is not the first time it's happened. It's cool that, 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 that people have turned things around. But for me and why it's so important for me to talk about this and to be vocal about it is that Part of the, the feminist movement is that people need to take accountability for their actions. So in the case of me speaking out against something that I was not overreacting about, what happened to me was a violation. And what was seen on set, what was happening to other young actresses, was also a violation. So we have a right to speak out. And producers, directors, production houses need to take responsibility for that. And so moving to on to my next case study, and this, this came from a, a post on Facebook from an ex-colleague of mine. We worked together in Generations. Um, I'm Rain uh, Ishmael Esop, who came out and shared her horrific incident that happened with her on set with, with, with a, a fellow crew member and how it affected her day and moving forward. And in her argument... She wasn't doing it as exactly the same as me. Not We weren't speaking out to get people fired. Speaking out because we know what our rights are and we don't want to feel undermined or, or put down or made to feel negative or made to feel uncomfortable in a space that we're supposed to be relishing our passion. 
and uh, with with assistance from SWIFT, which is uh, Sisters Working in, in Film and Television, which is an organisation that was started a few years ago, and of course my connection with the South African Guild of Actors, our chairman, uh, Jack Devering, Devering um, gave, gave a great letter of, 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 of um, advice and of course of support of what, 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 her, what her options are and, and, and um, she obviously went with those and ultimately what's happened now is that it's brought about a conversation that she had with production who are now changing their attitude. And, 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 and working towards providing a set or a space that is harmonious and safe for every individual that steps onto it. You know, um, and so why, why, another the third reason why I wanted to, to talk about this was to salute Amrain, and I've said this to her um, many times, for speaking out, because it's not easy. And once again, pushing the feminist ideology is that we need to acknowledge when wrongdoing is done and we need to start shifting the blame. Because with people who experience it and the people who speak out are the ones who are being blamed. And we need to change that ideology. So moving forward, what, what can we do? Even if you're not in the TV and film industry, it's about, it's about acknowledge, uh, not acknowledging what is around you. And granted, not everyone is an activist. Not everyone is going to be out there speaking up and 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 and, and um, taking charge and so forth. But it is your human right, and 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 the way moving forward would be acknowledge what is happening around you, and where where you can speak up for that person, but also standing in 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 support. Of people who do speak out, or who do, who you, or who are enduring such atrocities, whether it's in your workplace, whether it's on set, and so forth, and not turning a blind eye. You know, many years ago, I I, um, I dated a guy who's who's one of his friends, always made sexist remarks and remarks about beating up women, and my argument was that yes, you you as my partner might not be an abuser. But the fact that you're acknowledging it and joking about it means you, you're condoning the action. So if you're seeing something happening, don't just stand by and let it happen. Uh, you know, and, and a few weeks ago, we were, I was in a, in a discussion, I was in a lecture, listening to somebody talking on, on an, an issue and realizing that there was a strong racist element that was coming through. And of course, myself... Um, another black lady, and I have to mention the races because the ratio of, of, of race in the room was about 80% white, 20% black. And there were very few black voices speaking up, but we did speak up. But even fewer voices, white voices speaking up. And quite, yes, they, there was an apology and so forth that they should have and shouldn't have remained neutral. But the fact is, is that if you're not going to say anything and you're going, and you're going to acknowledge it or you're going to try and turn a blind eye to it, automatically puts you into the stable of agreeing with those actions. So we need more support for people who are in those situations, acknowledging it. Uh, we need support on, on a judicial level because we need those laws in place. So when it does happen, and um, any form, you can't weigh it up saying, well, your sexual assault was a lot worse than the next person, or your harassment was a lot worse than the next person. No. Any form of harassment, any form of abuse is, is just that. And we need to acknowledge it for that. And, and, you know, let's communicate. As I said, it's not about getting people fired. We've, we've been so, for centuries, been, been, been fed certain patriarch, patriarchal ideologies that it's just become a way of life for many people. And I've learned along the way about what my rights are as individuals and what I should be speaking up about and, and more importantly, why I shouldn't be scared to speaking up about it. So as we move forward, and especially the South Africans who are going to be celebrating Human Rights Day, is that let's learn and understand each other, understand tolerance, understand respect, 
understand we all have our own different tradition and cultural elements, but ultimately, if it is harming somebody physically, emotionally, or psychologically, it's wrong. Uh, once again, asking that level of empathy and also that level of professionalism, especially, I'm going to harp on again with the managers. Yes, we all want to get that extra commission, we want to get that work, but at the cost of somebody feeling unsafe by going to work, the cost of somebody not loving what they are destined to do, not loving their, their passion-filled existence, then it's wrong. So as we, as we take heed of this, if you need any more information on how you can really actively get involved in the industry, I strongly suggest, as and, and any actor should be part of South African Guild of Actors, that is www.saguildofactors.co.za. Um, there's SWIFT, which is Sisters Working in Film and Television. I know they have their own Facebook page. Uh, they're working very, very collectively, and not just with actors in the industry, with producers, with camera, camera personnel and so forth. But more importantly, as just the individual on the street, is that be aware of what's happening. Stop turning a blind eye. Uh, and for the woman out there, and we've said this time and time again, that whole PhD syndrome, pulling her down. We need that collective force with women. We need that collective energy. I always say in my, in my, in my, in my motivational talks is that look at, look at a soccer team. And my favorite team, everyone knows, is Kaza Chiefs or Manchester United. And how did they win goals? Ronaldo didn't score those goals on his own. It was a collective force. Men have been doing this for a long time. Women, yes, we are, there are a lot of us that are, that are pushing for the empowerment of women and are there and lifting each other up. But it needs to happen on so many different levels. And, and where it's going to start, it's going to start in here. You know, we've been, as I said, we've been enslaved into this patriarchal thinking and we need to break away from those chains. Number one. Number two, it's that self-love and our understanding that you have every right to, to have a presence into every room that you walk into, every set that you walk into. And if somebody is violating that right, you have a right to speak up. And then moving on to the forces that be that surround that, that, that bring the production together. It is your job as a producer. It's our job to make sure that everything runs swiftly. And that doesn't stop with, with the right amount, with, with what's in our bank account. It's, it starts with making sure that everybody on set has been treated equally and everyone on set feels safe and everyone on set is respected. So as we move into Human Rights Day 2018, let's, let's look at whose rights are being violated. What can we do? Are we happy? Are we safe? If you have any comments, please leave it on the thread or get onto my, my um, social media spaces, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, um, Tumblr, and it's all under Rosie Modena. Or you can send me a message on my website, www.rosiemodena.biz. Thank you so much for listening and have a beautiful week.